So I'm sure you all know how annoying it is to wake up in the morning by your alarm. And you probably also know it's even more awkward when you're not in your own bed. I'm sure none of you know what it is like to wake up in a cell though. Let me tell you, don't try it. It's awful. I overestimated the softness of the bed's padding. Imagine all of that and, except for your alarm being a nice tune on your mobile phone, it's actually... This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 39 The Real Air Nidak's heart jumped in her throat at a ratcheting sound made by the guards rattling the butts of their swords against the bars of the cells. A moment of dazed confusion fogged her sleepy brain as she stiffened under the sheets. When her mind caught up to the current events, she inhaled sharply, touching her face and head. Her wig was still in place, somewhat, and her fake beard and moustache felt straight enough. She thanked her past self, for getting back in her male character outfit before going to bed. Time to wake! The induction starts in ten minutes! One of the guards shouted. Yawning, Nidak hauled herself of the padded wooden plank. Stretching sore muscles, she reassessed her previous thoughts about the bed. She groaned as she realized she could have skipped to her room spent the night in a proper bed, and skipped back before dawn. Her stomach growled when she saw the tray sitting on the outside of her cell. By the time she finished the small breakfast and other morning necessities, two guards came to escort her to her room. There were only five other people there, of whom only one woman. A triple row of benches looked towards a smooth, dark wall. Nidak sat far enough from the others to avoid speaking to them. Two men on the first row were having an animated discussion, one gesturing wildly with his hands, switching between putting them in his lap and pointing towards the other man. Nidak couldn't see what he did when they were in his lap. The other man blocked her view but it involved a lot of movement. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. I am the Lady Odinas. Welcome to your induction on the Parallelian Laws. Nedak twitched as the woman she met two days ago, the one who'd let an innkeeper drug Nedak and Mila, walked into the room. Nedak slumped down, keeping her head low. This is a courtesy towards you, as you have been caught doing something against those laws. As an outsider, the Paralelian court prefers you to be educated instead of locked up. So, here you all are. If you get caught with an infringement again after this, you shall be properly punished. But we all know that shall not happen, right? Right. Eba smiled as she looked around the room, lingering on each of them. Did she squint her eyes slightly when looking at Nadek? You are all too spread out. Come closer. Come now. I shall not bite. Especially real men have nothing to fear. I've heard yesterday's induction was full to the brim due to the first day of the coronation festivities. Today is better. Nadek reluctantly moved closer, while Eba addressed the two men who'd been squabbling. What occupies you two gentlemen? Now, now, do not deny it. I saw when I entered. Best to get it out of the way before commencing. My brother, my lady, said the man who'd done all the gesturing, doesn't believe me when I say I saw someone disappear last night, right in front of my eyes. I swear, I saw it. A black figure followed the guards but then did something with their hands and knees, just like this, and disappeared. Nidak froze halfway to the bench, hovering above it. 
Eva's eyes flickered towards Nedak as she continued her descent on the bench. If Eva had recognized Nedak, which seemed to be so, there wasn't anything Nedak could do about it now. Eva could put Nedak in the hands of the people who'd been hunting her. Nedak felt sweat gathering under her wig. Eva merely gazed at the man in a thoughtful manner, making him squirm and mumble he was telling the truth. I believe you, she said with a nod. The coronation festivities lead in a joyous and magical event. Myths and legends have a way of finding their place during these days. Do not distrust your own eyes when you see something you would before have thought impossible. Magic is all around us. It is called the squares, triangles and lines. Only the royalty knows much about it, so I am afraid I cannot tell you about that. What I can tell you is to avoid shaking hands with certain people, like guards and keepers. And so the induction started. Nedak lifted her eyebrows on some occasions. Not only red food was forbidden, but also anything square, yellow speckled, burned or shiny. At the end, she was glad she'd chosen to stay for this, if not for the extra information, then for the entertaining way Eba explained things. Now, go forth and enjoy yourself in Hexago, remember. Many of these laws count for everywhere in Parallelo, although some towns have their own little peculiar rules added on to it. If you want to stay safe, go to the major of the town and ask about it. They should be more than happy to tell you their special rules. It is also a good way to get in their good graces. Everyone got up and moved to the door. Nina attempted to quickly scuttle away, keeping her head down but Eva grabbed her by the arm. A word with you, please? Nedak frowned at her. What? Are you going to betray my trust again? Let go of me. She yanked her arm out of the other woman's grip. A twinge of guilt surged up as she saw the hurt look on Eva's face. I had too much betrayal lately. Nedak muttered, trying to justify her action to Eva and herself. I am extremely sorry for what happened, Seton. I did not know he would do that. Please believe me. After you disappeared, I questioned Irak why he did what he did. He only knew the order had sent out an urgent message to all supporters to keep an eye out for me, and specifically anyone with me. They'd even added a description of you, based on what you looked like when we fled the square. Please. Sit. Let's talk. They worked fast. Stop trying to get me to sit. I'm not staying here any longer than I must. I'm keen to get out of the castle. And out of this disguise, you have no idea how itchy this wig is. The beard and moustache are annoying too. She looked at Eva sideways. I still don't know if I can trust you, but... You can, I swear, you can. Eva looked almost too eager. Nera held up a hand. But you may be able to tell me about that order. The order of the end, is it? Eva nodded. Nera thanked Yodak for that little piece of information. Is there any way we can meet somewhere? Or... Ugh. I suppose I could stay in this disguise for a little while longer. Would it be suspicious if you and I have an early lunch somewhere? No, it would not be. I have done so before, giving private lessons about the Parallelian laws to people who weren't satisfied after an induction. For a price, of course. Not that you have to pay, not at all. Although I wouldn't mind a different payment. Hmm? She wiggled her eyebrows, but reverted back to Sirius straight away. Whatever trouble you are in, I am on your side. And if that goes against the order, then I am doubly on your side, if that is possible. She stroked Nedak's cheek with a finger. I have to say I do prefer you without all that fake hair. 
and makes it hard to see your lovely face. Come now, there is an inn across the square where I always give these private lessons. With luck, it is not too busy yet. After yesterday's heavy celebration evening, many people only get active by the afternoon. Let's go then. Wait, one more question. Nidek had wondered about it ever since she saw Eba enter the room. Didn't you say you hadn't been allowed in the castle anymore after Wani's ascent to the throne? Why are you here? How? Wani? Eba doubled up from laughter. She wiped her eyes as she straightened, an occasional giggle interjecting her speech. That's the best thing I've heard in a while. Oh, now I truly hope I get to talk to him again someday, if only to tease him with that. The laughter was infectious enough for Nadek to fail at keeping her lips neutral. She crossed her arms to try and convey at least a modicum of seriousness. This was not the time to get into a hopeless fit of laughter. This part of the castle is almost separate to the rest of it, as a measure of security. I volunteered for these inductions before Lord Pagewin became the ruler, and because I am good at them, and not many nobles like to do it, they allowed me to continue. I expected him to come and see me here. That was silly of me. He most likely does not know I am still allowed to do these, or they do not allow him to come. He is the king, but I do not believe he is the one controlling the kingdom. Come now, what are you waiting for? We should not linger here. She winked at Nerek and led them out of the castle proper, across the square and into an inn. Aha, Lady Iberberry! Another private session today? The small dining room is available and ready for use, if you wish. The innkeeper led the way. Nedak had a better feeling about this one. For one, she wasn't skinny. For another, she wasn't pompous enough to declare her inn as a house. A normal innkeeper in a normal inn. Hopefully without connections to the order. Hours later, after a decent meal and several drinks, Nedek knew more about the order and Eba knew more about Nedek. Upon hearing who Nedek really was, she went down on one knee and, as formal as can be, swore fealty to Nedek, who thought she'd burst from embarrassment. Eba proved to be resourceful, so Nedek's master plan which hadn't looked further than rescuing Patat and hiding until sea day, turned more elaborate. Before the end of the next nine days, the common people would be looking forward to the return of a real Isho on the throne. You have been listening to Nadak, Chapter 39, The Real Heir. Narrated, adventured, and lived through by myself, Nadek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Nadek's heart jumped in her throat at the ratcheting sound made by the car. But the, uh. All right, that's a good start. A moment of dazed confusion fogged her sleepy blur bloody fucking hell. A moment <clears throat> her stomach growled when she saw the trail. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I am the Lady Odinas. Welcome to your induction on the Parallelian Laws. Shit. I should look up her voice, shouldn't I? Alright, let's do it. Let's see what Lady Odinas sounds like. I don't think it's much different. Okay. Okay. Got it. Nadek felt sweat gathering under her wig. Gathering? Gathering? Nadek felt sweat gathering. 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 Swore felty. Swore felty. Is it felty or fealty? I don't know. Damn English. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Felty. Felty. I think it's fealty. 
Fealty, like I said. Fealty. Fealty. Silly Belgian. Alright. Except for your alarm being a nice tune on your mobile phone, it's actually... Done. Is it the end? 